Uh, we are now moving on to Missouri. A teenager was shot after going to the round, wrong house to pick up his brother. And the person who shot him was, uh, was questioned by the police and then released. Let's take a look. Went to the wrong home to pick up his younger brothers, and the homeowner shot him. 16-year-old Ralph Yarrow is recovering in the hospital in stable condition. His family describes him as a typical high schooler who loves to play the bass clarinet. He has been looking forward to starting college and majoring in chemical engineering. Police say Yarl's family say that he was uh, given the address 115th Terrace, but he mistakenly went to a home at 115th Street instead. The shooter has been released, and there is sparking protest nation wide right now and outrage nationwide. Good morning, Don. Uh, authorities say more is needed to go forward and they need a statement from Ralph Yarl. Uh, he is doing well. He's in the hospital. He's recovering. But the family says that it, this is a long road, especially when it comes to his mental and his emotional health. This is a teenager that is being described as friendly and well-mannered. I can't begin to fathom how glaringly obvious the sentiment expressed by our institutions are when you see a situation like this where like a young black teenager is shot for the crime of like ringing on the wrong doorbell and the mistreatment by the state of the perpetrator is like deliberate you know what i mean it's i mean i'm sorry it's, it is it has to be there it's basically the same as like the daniel perry circumstance where it's like it doesn't matter like you are a criminal for there's a reasonable doubt here of your criminality because you're a black kid okay because you're black like they want to basically reinforce the incredibly scary precedent that like you shoot a black kid that's stand your ground baby you know what i mean it's just that's how it is so you probably heard this story it's really awful the 16 year old kid who knocked on a door in a house in Kansas City, Missouri, to look for his siblings whom he was picking up. Wrong house, the homeowner, instead of letting him go on his way, instead shoots the kid in the head and then shoots him in ki again. The kid survived and is in recovery, but is in bad shape, obviously. The kid was black, the uh, kid is black, the shooter is white. And there's been a lot of conversation around this about racism, rightfully so, about the wide availability of guns, rightfully so, about the lack of a benefit of the doubt that black children get. Rightfully so. What I want to bring up really quickly, just because of my interest in sort of the history of gun regulation, of gun culture, and this sort of thing, is how this is sort of exactly the scenario from the perspective of the homeowner, the white homeowner, this scenario of a young black person coming to your home, probably a criminal, whom you can then shoot, is exactly what so many mouthpieces for the gun industry has been selling for decades. It's part of the pitch that you own one of these weapons. You own a lot of these weapons to defend your homestead, to defend your home, and from whom this image of urban crime, of urban disorder, of essentially black people. It's part, again, it's part of the pitch. Exactly. It's the, it's the same attitude. It's spot on. It's reinforcing the narrative that you need a gun to defend yourself from urban crime. The same principle behind the McCloskeys becoming like, you know, famous within the Republican uh, world for running outside with their AR-15s when there were Black Lives Matter protests happening in their gated community. It is a, a, it's a way to sell guns through a white supremacist fantasy of, of vigilante justice being enacted towards those who you are terrified of, uh, those who you believe have done something wrong. Absolutely what's going on. That's why I said it's the exact same mentality behind Governor Greg Abbott fantasizing about immediately pardoning Daniel. Uh, uh, fuck, I don't want to fuck up his name. Yeah, it is Daniel Perry. Garrett Foster is the person who he shot. But it's the same principle. Because Daniel Perry went to a Black Lives Matter rally, said he was going to shoot people. He he fantasized about shooting protesters. And then he drove his, drove his car into a Black Lives Matter rally and then shot one of the Black Lives Matter protesters. And he was convicted. He was found guilty by a jury of his peers beyond a reasonable doubt and yet governor greg abbott wants to pardon him why because that's what they want they want the law to protect them and them only if you go out and you shoot black Lives matter protesters like it, you will be safe don't worry that's the message they want to put out there officers arrived at the scene after a neighbor called 911 and took the homeowner immediately into custody the homeowner who has not been identified was released after 24 hours pending further investigation the police department says they're waiting to obtain a formal statement from the victim and further forensic evidence. I want everyone to know that I'm listening. What? Like, what, you need to know if he was asking for it? Is that what you want? What, what do you mean? Hey, 
What if he died? No, for uh, no, no uh, impact statement from the victim in that regard. So what do you do in that situation? You're just like, oh, oops, guess we can't solve it. We just need further forensic evidence. Like, what do you mean? A person literally just went up and fucking domed a teenager. This makes no sense. You would need that if you believe that this person was truly acting in self-defense. And the fact that they didn't actually like you know, keep him under custody and immediately launch a, a, a formal investigation implies that they kind of do give him credence to that, you know, protecting your uh, ground shit, you know, the castle doctrine. And I understand the concern that, that we are receiving from the community. The information that we have now, it does not say that, that it's racially motivated. That's still an active investigation. But as a chief of police, I do recognize the racial components of this case. I do recognize and understand um the community's concern two points of clarification concerning the shooting of, of ralph yarl the suspect was not detained for 24 hours he was released in under two hours after providing a statement to the police two police recorded a statement from ralph in his hospital bed on friday so like they already have his statement the cops literally are behaving like me memeing when i say like oh well what are the vibes of this kid maybe he deserved to be bullied that that sort of thing but in this circumstance it's like literally a real situation where a dude shot and intentionally tried to kill a black teenager that came to his door. Like, they're like, hey, but what about his vibes, though? Was he good at the clarinet? You know what I mean? Civil rights attorneys Lee Merritt and Benjamin Crump are representing the victim and his family and demanding swift action and are calling the shooting horrendous and unjustifiable. As a mother of three children, this enrages me. And protesters gathering Sunday outside the home where Yara was shot demanding justice. He is alive. <laughs> he is healing. Yes. So I just want to tell you thank you for being here because my nephew is alive. And the homeowner was released. State law says you either have to charge someone or release them after 24 hours. And authorities here say they need more evidence. They want to talk to this teenager. Yeah. He wasn't released after 24 hours. He was released after two hours. So mainstream media playing a little fast and loose with the with the situation here. Also, no further evidence. Bro, he shot him. How much you want to bet this is some fucking Gran Torino shit? I, I don't know anything, okay? I don't know what's going on, but I'm willing to fucking bet that this particular situation, it's an old racist ass uh, uh, dude, I'm assuming. And, and they were just like, oh, he's just an old guy. You know, he doesn't mean harm to anybody, you know, except for... The obvious harm he's conducted. So, ah, oh, what are we going to do? We're going to put him in fucking uh, jail? He might even be like an old cop or something. Apparently he's 84. Oh, he, there's information on him already? And they want to continue this investigation. So he was released. And it's part of the reason why people are so upset this morning and why they're asking for justice. Don? A lot more to unfold in this investigation. Thank you, Camilla Bernal. And I understand the concern that, that we are receiving from the community. The information that we have now, it does not say that, that it's racially motivated. That's still an active investigation. But but as a chief of police, I do recognize the racial components of this case. I do recognize and understand um, the community. Everyone's concern. a liberal. Everyone's a liberal. That's such. That's like. Did Kamala Harris write this, dude? That everyone's a liberal. I recognize the racial components of this, but as of now, we do not believe that there's enough evidence to. to you know, declare there's a racial component. That's awesome. When they say that, they mean like, we know the victim is a black teenager and the shooter is a white guy. That's what they're saying, I think. He continues to improve. He's responsible for making good progress. After spending three nights in the hospital, Ralph is recovering at home, being cared by his mother, who's a nurse. Family attorney, Ben Crump. We have been informed by the, his family that it was a white man who shot their 16-year-old son, Crump said, explaining that he believes the team was shot because he's black. It is, it, it is inescapable. Not to observe the racial dynamics here, said Crump. If roles were reversed, he continued, how much outrage would there be in America? At a weekend rally, community and family members marched and demonstrated in front of the man's house, calling for charges to be filed. Prosecutors marched as they, protesters marched as they uh, chanted Justice for Ralph, Black Lives Matter, and carried signs reading, ringing a doorbell is not a crime, and the shooter should do the time. The teen's father said, we want charges, that's all we want. Um, the family is seeking swift action. When he was trying to pick up his younger brother, when he mistakenly rang the doorbell at the wrong house, a man shot Ralph twice and now he's in critical condition. One of the Jarl's attorneys also says that the shooter said, don't come back around here and immediately shot the teen. Jarl went to three homes for help. At the third, Jarl, who had been shot in the head, was told to lie on the ground and put his hands in the air. What? Why the... Okay, why is CNN not mentioning any of this shit? I know he's out of the hospital now and his, his situation continues to improve and his, like I said, his, 
His mother is taking care of him. His mother's a nurse. I don't understand why CNN is not actually uh, talking about any of this other shit. Emerging details of the incident illustrate the strength and bravery shown by the high school junior after he was shot. A neighbor who asked not to be identified tells CNN she called 911 after Ralph came to her door bleeding. She was directed to stay inside her own by the inside her home by the emergency operator for her safety as the shooter's location was unknown. I wanted to help him, but they kept saying, we don't know where the shooter is at, the woman said. She complied initially, then went outside with towels to help suppress the bleeding. I kneeled down next to him, and I said, what's your name? Who shot you? She said, Ralph explained he was supposed to pick up his brother. We figured out then he went to the wrong street, which is no excuse for what happened, she said. This is somebody's child. I had to clean blood off my door, off my railing. That's someone's child's blood. I'm a mom. This is not okay. While waiting for the ambulance, bleeding from the injuries to the left side of his head and his right arm, the neighbor said Ralph told her he runs the high school track team and plays the black bass clarinet in band. He was very alert, she said. He's a very strong man, very brave. Y'all was shot in the head, which cracked his skull and left him with a critical traumatic brain injury, the attorney said. While the teenager was still on the ground, the homeowner opened fire a second time, striking Yarl in the upper right arm. How the encounter turned violent so quickly still confuses Yarl as he recovers, his aunt Faith Spoonmore said. We'll remind him, like, Ralph, you're alive, buddy. And then he has the times where he's like, why? I did nothing wrong. Why? I did nothing wrong. And he just cannot understand why, Spoonmore said. So it's waves. He goes through waves. Merritt said Yarl is now in stable condition and out of the hospital. Police have not released the name of the or the race of the resident who opened fire. He was taken into custody and held for 24 hours, the maximum. He was not held for 24 hours. Why is everyone in the media saying he was held for 24 hours? Maximum for a suspect until felony charges are filed, police chief Stacy Graves said. Police have not released the name of the res race of the resident of open fire. The Kansas City, Missouri Police Department said in a statement Monday that they've submitted the investigative case to the Clay County Prosecutor's Office to review charges. Yarl said the person who shot him was a white man who seemed angry and hostile by the his presence on the property, his attorney said. Mary said the teenager miraculously saved his own life by fleeing and banging on at least three neighbors' doors for help. Three. And on the third home, Merritt said the neighbor told Yarl to lie on the ground and put his hands in the air. He complied and then passed out. Merritt said the neighborhood where the shooting occurred is predominantly white and conservative and commonly referred to among locals as God's country. In recent years, newer families have been moving in, including a black family, she said, but most residents keep to themselves. By the way, that's what they mean when they say there's no crime. They just mean like there's no presence of black people in our neighborhoods. Yeah, someone in the chat also said this, but in a lot of instances, a lot of people themselves don't even fucking recognize that they're living in a sundown town because they just simply never see black people around. So they just take it for granted and think like, oh no, like there's no, there's no crime here. Right. And they don't even realize like their neighbors are fucking psychotic racists half the fucking time. Cause you know, there's no, there's no additional racist component, uh, you know, triggering their, their outwardly aggressive stance against black people in the sense. And by that, I mean the presence of a black body, um, but also, a lot of those people are also blind to these realities, you know? They're blind to the realities of white supremacy in this country. They're privileged. They are unaware. They don't recognize it. Um, so they think it must not exist here. Media is reporting that the Kansas City man who shot Ralph Yarl, 16, is a white man in his 80s. He hasn't been rearrested. As investigators consider whether he's protected by Missouri's stand-your-ground law. And for you to understand, stand your ground is quite literally the reason for uh, like that. The reason why stand your law, stand your ground exists as a law is this is so that the, the, the guy who shot uh, this kid, this teenager can get away with it. That's like the entire purpose of stand your ground for the record. Clay County prosecutor announces he's filed two felony counts against Andrew Lester in the shooting of a 16 uh, year old uh, Ralph Yar assault in the first degree armed criminal action. A warrant has been issued for Lester's arrest. There was a racial component to the case. Clay County prosecutor argues when asked why there's no attempted murder charge. The prosecutor explained that Lester is being charged with the highest charge under Missouri law. Probable cause statement. Rounds were fired through the glass door. Yarl did not enter home. No words were exchanged. Well, that conflicts with the witness uh, testimony, which is odd, especially when you are the fucking prosecutor. The prosecutor is supposed to be on the side of the victim. What the fuck? You are functionally the victim's lawyer uh, and bringing up his case to the state. That's what you're doing to the government. Very odd that he wouldn't also add uh, that there was words exchanged according to the fucking witness statement from the victim himself. Probably means prior to the shooting. I think the witness said, I mean, Ralph's testimony, and we'll learn more about this as more details come out, but uh, I think Ralph's testimony implied that uh, he said it before he started shooting. But at least, I mean, the prosecutor is doing a decent job. He's going to do whatever, whatever he can to get a fucking conviction, so...
And he said it was possibly racially motivated. See what happens in this case. And of course, I will give you updates when there are any updates. 